Good morning, everyone. Welcome once again to Everlasting Faith Fellowship. I'm Pastor James, and today we're going to complete our series on prayer. And the name of today's message is A Church Committed to Prayer. A Church Committed to Prayer. I'm going to start off by the story of a, a church minister of music who led the choir, and he wanted to change the order of service. He wanted to make sure there would be no confusion, so he whispered to the preacher, he said, listen, after the prayer, we're not going to have any response. And too often, we, we take those words literally, and we pray without expecting a response from God. Now, he meant a different type of response, but it came out the wrong way. You see, Jesus wants his church to grow. But if the church is to grow, it has to prepare to grow. And that preparation must begin with a commitment to prayer on a part of the people within God's church. Amen? Now, what is that commitment that God is expecting from us? Well, it's a commitment to, to pray and expect a response from God. Now, persistent prayer is really the foundation of all our Christian growth. Now, scriptures do teach us that persistent prayer has always been of utmost importance to all of God's people. This is true throughout the Old Testament, but it's especially true in the New Testament church, God's church. Well, immediately after Jesus ascended to heaven, disciples and the woman found themselves constantly in prayer. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 14. It says, they all met together and were constantly united in prayer. And along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women and the brothers of Jesus. Now in Acts, we're also told that the early church was actually devoted to prayer. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. It says, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. They devoted themselves to prayer. Now this continues throughout the book of Acts with example after example of how the church always was before God in prayer. So what happened as a result of these prayers? Well, the church was empowered with the boldness, the boldness of the Holy Spirit. And what happened? The church began to grow. Prayer is undisputably one of the greatest and most underutilized, right, weapons that we have at our disposal as Christians. Now, of course, Jesus knew this, and that's why he told his disciples about a certain widow who persisted in her prayers. The story is found in Luke chapter 18, which we're basing this message on today. And beginning in verse 1, it says, One day... Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, and he said, this guy, this judge, neither feared God nor cared about people. Verse 3. It continues, it says, A widow of that city came to the judge repeatedly, the, the word says, and she said, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy, judge. But what did the judge do? According to the scripture, the judge ignored her for a while, but he finally said to himself, I don't fear God or care about any people. Verse 5. But this woman, he said, she's driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out with her constant prayer requests. And then the Lord said, Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Verse 7. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. 
Even though it was an unjust judge, because of that lady's persistent prayer, he rendered a just decision. So don't. So the Bible says, don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people then who cry out for him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? Verse 8 says, I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly, but when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? So from this parable in the Bible, we learn really three essential elements of persistent prayer. Number one, persistent prayer is persistent. <laughs> Verse 3 says, the widow came to him repeatedly. So the story has two primary characters, a widow and a judge, right? Now the judge was heartless. He, didn't, he said he didn't fear God or man. But the poor widow came to the judge seeking justice. She had no clout, right? No powerful lawyer, no money to grease the wheels of justice. She seemed completely helpless against her adversary. She couldn't even count on a fair ruling from this unjust judge, but the only weapon she had at her disposal was persistence. Now, this widow would have never received justice if she only asked once or twice and she wasn't persistent. The judge would have just forgot about her, right? You see, brothers and sisters, God wants us to persist in prayer. That's why he told us this parable. Now, Luke introduces this in verse 1 of Luke 18 and 1. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story. Why? To show that they should always pray and never give up. So in the first line there, he's telling us we should pray and never give up. C.H. Spurgeon once said, Prayer pulls the rope down below, and a great bell above rings the ears of God, right? He says some people hardly pull the bell because they pray so weakly. Others give an occasional jerk at the rope. He said, but he who communicates with heaven is a man who grasps that rope to the bell and pulls continually with all his might. Do you want to see your church grow? Do you want to see revival for Christ? Do you want to see the Spirit of God light us on fire for Him, right? Do you want to see people coming in repentance, being baptized in Christ's name? Then it's time to pray, amen? It's time to pray. What do we need to do? We need to, like Spurgeon says, grab that rope of prayer. Don't just pull it once in a while, but just keep ringing that bell of prayer, right? Just keep pulling. And when you're pulling on that rope, right, you have to do a couple things. You have to believe that God is listening. You have to believe that not only is he listening, but God is willing to act and believe that great things will begin to happen in your own church. Because look what Jesus said, Luke 11, Luke chapter 11, beginning in verse 9. He says, and so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for keep on seeking and you will find keep on knocking and the door will be open for you he keeps on verse 10 for everyone who asks receives everyone who seeks finds and everyone who knocks the door will be open so we either believe that promise, amen, or we don't. <laughs> and if we don't, your church is going to stagnate and die. But if you do, you will prosper in the strength of the Holy Spirit until Jesus comes again. Now, when we're talking about churches stagnating, we're not just talking about filling the building up with a whole bunch of people. No, what is the church actually doing? Church could be four people, two people. What they're doing is what counts. What they're doing by praying for others. Other people, whether they're members of that particular church or not, they seek out God and find salvation. Your church is doing what God wants you to do. 
The second element of prayer is persistent prayer is insistent. Persistent prayer is insistent. Let's go back to Luke chapter 18, verse 3. Luke chapter 18, verse 3. It's talking about a widow. A widow of that city came to Jesus repeatedly saying, give me just, I'm, get, I'm sorry, get, it came to the lawyer repeatedly. And she said, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. She said, give me justice. Now this scene was different than the courtroom we're thinking about, right? Where it's all nice and orderly. Nobody dares speak out or anything. You have to be quiet. No, it was unruly. It was a noisy place. Mass of people pushing and shoving. It was total chaos in these courts. Everyone tried to outshout others, trying to get the judge's attention. It was a mess. But that widow was so persistent and insistent, the judge granted her, out of all those unruly people, he granted her her request, her plea. So what is the point? The important point is that we must keep our prayers going up to God with the same tenacity as that widow did in that unruly court. She never stopped until she got what she wanted. With the same intensity as we have to do that, right? And God actually rejoices because we are intense like that, amen? If somebody told us what to do. We're really just following what he asked us to do. I heard sometimes, sometime someone said once that God, you know what? Don't keep praying like that. God doesn't want you to keep asking for something. He heard your prayer the first time. You only need to ask once. You don't want to be bothered with there's nothing further from the truth. The Bible says nothing like that. It says just the opposite. He wants us to pray and not give up. And this is one of the ways he releases power in our lives. Now watch this. It's impossible to be insistent in our prayer if we're not praying specifically. Specifically. Notice, the widow had a particular situation that she was asking for. She said, grant me justice against my enemy. This enemy that was, whatever she, enemy was doing to her. And we have to assume that there was a particular enemy and a specific situation that this widow was dealing with that she consistently asked for justice. So whatever we pray about, God says, be specific. What do we mean by that? Well, so many of our prayers are generalized, right? And then they're, they fail to be effective and we wonder why. Don't pray for, for instance, don't say, forgive my sins. Name those sins. God already knows what the sin was. He wants you to admit that you did it, right? Don't pray, heal the sick. No, mention the names of those people that are sick that you're praying for. Don't pray, oh, be with all the missionaries throughout the world. No, name what missionary you're talking about and pray for that missionary. And when you're praying for growth in your church, pray for a specific event, right? Pray for your pe preacher, your elder, or your teachers. But don't just say the preacher. Pray for him by his name. Pray for the elder by their name, amen? When we pray specifically, Guess what? God answers specifically. A real help in making sure our prayers are insistent and specific, right? A lot of people keep what they call a prayer diary. They take a small notebook, write down their prayer requests that they've been asking God. They note the date they first pray about it. And then they note the date when God answers the prayer. Now keep in mind, God doesn't answer the prayer on your schedule. He answers the prayer on his schedule when he knows it's the right time to answer that specific prayer. But the most important thing, whether you keep a notebook or not, is keep praying that the prayer you prayed until you get an answer from God. Don't just say it once or twice and give up. God answers prayer, but we have to make a specific request 
if you want to get a specific answer. Because if you say, pray for all the sick people, he probably did heal some sick people. You don't know about it. But if you pray for, pray for John Jones, right, and John Jones gets better, you know that the prayer was answered. Pray for specific things. The third element to persist in prayer is be consistent. Be persistent, be insistent, and be consistent. Let's go back to Luke chapter 18 again. This woman is driving me crazy, the judge said. I'm going to see she gets justice because she's wearing me out with her what? Constant requests. That woman kept coming back every day, repeatedly and consistently, and the judge's apparent unwillingness to hear her made her come back even more. Finally, the judge said, mm -mm, I can't do this no more. He relented. Why? Because the woman had become really a nuisance to him. Her consistent badgering wore him down to the point that he granted her whatever she wanted, right? So we get the point, hopefully. We need to be consistent and persistent in our prayers. Now, we also need to understand that this is a parable of contrasts and not comparisons. What do I mean by that? Well, Jesus tells us that our Heavenly Father is really not like the unjust judge. The point is that if this godless and corrupt judge would respond to the widow because of her constant persistence, how much more then will our loving God respond to our prayers, right? Amen. Let's go back to Luke again, 18 and verse 8. He says, I tell you, he, meaning God, why, will get justice to them quickly, but when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? Jesus says that we get justice quickly. Now, does that mean God will jump every time we ask for something? Because a lot of times that's taken out of context, isn't it? Whatever you ask for, God's going to give you. He may want to see if we're continually faithful in our prayers and obedience to him before he grants us what we want, right? And he has to know that we really need what we're asking for or the other person we're asking for needs it. God knows our needs. He knows everyone's needs before we even ask, right? And like a wise father, he answers according to what's best for us. He answers according to what's best for us. Listen, don't let your prayer life be like calling a company that we deal with every day, right? We're seeking an answer to an important question about their service or maybe something we bought, right? We look up the number, the 800 number. We call up and all we get is this automated thing, right? It says your call is very important to us. Well, if it was very important, they'd probably answer the phone, not put you on hold for 20 minutes, right? You wait for what seems like an eternity, nobody comes online, right? So let me say, well, I'm going to push one of these other buttons. You push one of these other buttons, you talk to some other department. They said, one moment, we'll connect you with the correct department. Same thing happens again. Your call is very important to us. How often do we cry out to God for help? but we try other channels, push other buttons, right, before God's message comes through. We turn to other sources for help, looking for assistance that we don't believe God is giving to us. But guess what? When we call God, we don't get a recording. He answers, this is God, can I help you? There's no recording. There's no waiting for him to answer, right? When we cry out to God for his intervention, he wants us to be consistent, to stay on track, to keep on praying for his blessings in our lives, right? We have to keep on praying consistently, not just ask one time and forget it. When you have to ask for specific things, not for just something in general, right? God's church is intended to grow, so we must never shortchange the ministry of prayer. We must be the people who are involved in a multitude of prayer ministries, right? From prayer groups, maybe, to special days of fasting and prayer. 
And I think God is asking us a question today. He wants to know, will we be committed to being persistent in our prayers? He wants to know we're seeking him out. He wants to know, are you looking for what his will is for his church? His will for our own lives. Are we seeking that out or are we trying to do things our way? We don't want church growth unless it's done God's way. Remember, God's way includes a foundation of what? Of persistent prayer. Prayer that keeps on keeping on, amen, until the Lord gives us an answer. He may say no sometimes because he knows we don't need what we're asking for or it might do us harm. We have to accept whatever the answer is, but we got to keep on asking until our prayer is answered. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for the avenue of communication you've given us through prayer. We're able to communicate with our Creator, with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you for such an opportunity, Lord, that we can come to you for anything. Help us to be persistent and insistent in our prayers. Not just to ask one time. Help us to be specific in what we ask for so that you may give it to us, Father. And help us to be patient, waiting for your answer. And we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us on the internet today. We're going to say goodbye to those folks visiting us on our internet broadcast. And until we meet once again, may God bless all of you.